everybody. I'm Chef Todd. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I've been a chef for a long time and uh, we, my family and I moved into this orchard a few years ago that my wife's family built nearly a hundred years ago. Uh, we take care of nearly two dozen fruit trees. Uh, we maintain a garden where we grow strawberries, raspberries, a plethora of vegetables, and uh, have a ton of projects to keep us busy, including building a chicken coop for the incoming chickens. So the number one question is, why do a show like this? Uh, for me, it's all about sharing what I've gone through. Uh, I love this life, this handmade life that we've kind of developed here. Um, we have a lot of fun growing everything that we need, uh, building things, restoring furniture. Uh, we even work on restoring this old house and bringing it back to some of its former glory. So Ross and I were hanging out one day and he's just like, you should do a video. And uh, for that, I'd like to apologize right off the bat. Uh, I was working in the garden, working in the shop, and we shot these first two episodes. And uh, we didn't even think about the coolest thing. We just were so excited to get started with this thing and uh, share some of these awesome ideas with you guys that uh, I was still wearing my ratty garden wear. So uh, we're going to look at that in the future. But man, this is going to be a blast. So uh, please hang out with us. Uh, let's go check out what's going on in the kitchen. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about focaccia bread. Uh, focaccia is a classic Italian flatbread that is uh, really just a canvas for flavor. Uh, you can do a ton of things with it uh, from adding onions, garlic, uh, cheese, and even meats and sausages. Uh, today we're going to use rhubarb, feta, honey, and some fresh herbs and uh, see what we come up with. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video and please let me know if you try the recipe. Have a great day. Today, we will be doing a rhubarb focaccia bread. The ingredients you need are as follows. For your starter, you will need a cup and a half of flour, one cup of water, two tablespoons of warm water, a heaping tablespoon of fresh yeast. And the dough itself requires two cups of unbleached flour, a cup and a half of whole wheat flour, two tablespoons of warm water, a heaping tablespoon of fresh yeast, half a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of olive oil, two tablespoons of honey, two cups of chopped rhubarb, one cup of crumbled feta cheese, and a tablespoon of mixed herbs consisting of basil, chives, and oregano. The first step in making dough is to make a poolish or sponge starter. We use a starter to get the sour flavor that we always strive for in our breads. These starters can ferment for as little as 10 minutes to many, many years. Some families are even known to pass their starters down for generations. To make your starter, bloom your yeast in two tablespoons of warm water. When the yeast in warm water is foaming, add one cup and a half of flour and mix thoroughly. Allow this mixture to sit for at least an hour, preferably eight to 12 hours. The longer it sits, the more distinct flavors you will achieve. One of the coolest things about a true starter is that it relies on wild yeast pulled either from the air around it or introduced through grapes or other fruit. In fact, the air in San Francisco is what makes their sourdough so renowned. However, today we are using a fresh yeast that you can buy at the supermarket. It will give you a more controlled rise it is important to ensure that your yeast is active so we do not waste an entire batch of ingredients if the yeast is dead. When we place yeast in warm water, it should double in volume and appear airy, creating small bubbles and foam. As you can see, our yeast is very active. It helps that it is very warm in the kitchen. In a cooler climate, yeast may take a little longer to react. While the yeast is blooming, we will prepare the other ingredients for the dough. Begin with adding your dry ingredients to a large mixing bowl, followed by your olive oil and honey. The reason we add honey to the dough is to feed the yeast. This causes a chemical reaction as the yeast consumes the sugar of the honey and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide, which are what causes the bread to rise. However, the alcohol bakes off so you can't get drunk off of bread. Now we add the bloomed yeast taking care to get all the bits and pieces. Then our starter that has been just hanging out, growing flavors. 
It's all bubbly and smells like a San Francisco sourdough, which is perfect for our needs. I prefer to mix my dough by hand because I like to be able to feel and gauge my dough and know the texture. Start mixing with a wooden spoon until all the ingredients come together in the center of the bowl. Now comes the fun part. Turn your dough onto a pre-floured work surface and begin to knead. Kneading dough relaxes the dough and allows it to rise more efficiently. To knead, push the dough firmly and move your hands away from your body. Turn it 45 degrees and fold it back on itself and repeat the process. This process can take 5 to 15 minutes depending on environmental temperature and humidity. Stop when the dough is soft and slightly elastic. The more often you make your own bread, the more of a feel you will acquire for when the dough is ready. Underworked dough will be wet and not rise. Overwork it and it will be tough. Pull all of the edges together creating a ball. Place the ball seam side down onto your workspace. And gently rock the dough in a circular motion using your fingertips and the edges of your hand to make the seam tighter. Using olive oil, coat a metal or glass bowl, place the bread seam side up in the bowl, flip it over to coat the ball of dough with oil, cover with a damp towel, and let sit for an hour, an hour and a half until it has doubled in size. Rhubarb is a misunderstood vegetable, conjuring memories of mouth-puckering sour flavor. However, it can be a lot of fun to cook with. We've been using it in barbecue sauces, adult and virgin style beverages, and of course the focaccia we will be making today. Rhubarb is a great addition to any home garden. It is low maintenance, has a high yield, and returns every year hardier than the last. We figure our plant is at least 30 years old. Even harvesting is simple. The plant tells you if it's ready. Grab a stalk, give it a little tug. If it breaks free, it's ripe enough to eat. If it does not, just give it a few more days. Even the leaves are helpful. They quickly break down and compost. To prepare them for composting, simply tear them into smaller pieces. We compost everything we can, from vegetable scraps to coffee grounds to eggshells. It reduces our waste and replaces necessary minerals in the soil. I use a simple compost tumbler. It quickly turns green and brown organic waste into nutrient-rich plant food. The tumbler works by simply introducing more oxygen, which aids in decomposition. To operate, you turn the crank. I always tell the kids, if you put something in there, turn the crank at least nine times. Our dough has now risen to double its original size, so it's time to punch it down which is exactly what it sounds like. Punch it down into the bowl and roll it onto your pre-floured workspace. Taking care not to overwork the dough, stretch it out by holding it on the back of your hand and letting its own weight pull it down and continue to work it into the shape and size we need. Sprinkle with the rhubarb and feta cheese down the middle of the focaccia. Fold the sides over and firmly but ever so gently stretch the dough until it's close to its original size. Coat a sheet pan with olive oil or line it with parchment paper. I prefer to use olive oil. Paired with the high heat of the oven, it achieves a crispier crust. Carefully transfer your loaf to the sheet pan. Cover the pan with a damp towel and let it rise 30 to 45 minutes or again until it doubles in volume. Make sure your oven is preheated to 400 degrees at this time. Using your fingers or the back of a wooden spoon, push dimples an inch or two apart all over the loaf. Drizzle with olive oil and garnish with salt, feta cheese, and herbs. The saltiness of the feta and the sweetness of the basil combine to balance the tartness of the rhubarb. Place the bread on the middle rack and cook for 22 minutes or until the crust and cheese is golden brown. If you can resist the scent of fresh baked bread, allow it to sit for five to 10 minutes before enjoying. At that point, cut it with a serrated bread knife, serve with honey butter, or use some tomorrow for a sharp cheddar grilled cheese sandwich. That was great.
thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna have a little focaccia with honey butter, simply just some butter whipped up with some honey. Uh, the, another great way to enjoy this is with some sharp cheddar cheese, grill it up a little bit, super tasty. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Apple Tree Show. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel under the Apple Tree and uh, look for me on Facebook or out in public. We'll be at the farmer's markets and uh, all over the place. Join, in ne join us next time for Under the Apple Tree.